Number nine, letter A. An MRI technician moves his hand from a region of very low magnetic field strength to an MRI scanner's two tesla field with his fingers pointing in the direction of the field. Find the average EMF induced in his wedding ring given its diameter is 2.2 uh, centimeters and assuming it takes 0.25 seconds to move it into the field. All right, so basically here is the wedding ring and let's assume we're viewing it like from the side and you know um, he's moving his hand or whatever. Um, she's moving her finger, um, into this magnetic field and it is pointing, it says through the ring basically. And it started at zero, meaning the initial magnetic field was zero since it was in a region of very low. And then after, uh, they stick their hand in this field, um, it is going to be, uh, two Tesla. So as you can see, we have a changing magnetic field, right? The final value is 2, the initial 0, so the change in the magnetic field is 2. Now, in order to induce an EMF, we need to think through this formula, that the EMF induced, okay, the EMF induced will be equal to negative, the number of turns of the coil, uh, you know, whatever ring, if it's a ring, it's one, there's one turn, all right, whatever loop is entering that magnetic field, multiplied by the change in flux, divided by then the... Uh, change in time. Now the change in flux, I'm going to substitute now the flux equation on in. Okay, so in other words, this will work out to be that the EMF induced will be equal to negative number of turns multiplied by the change in the magnetic field now. Because remember, if it's a changing magnetic flux, it's a result of either a changing magnetic field, changing area, or a changing angle. In this case, we're dealing with a change in magnetic field. All of them could change too, right? So um, anyway, change in magnetic field uh, multiplied by the area multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the normal of the area and the magnetic field. What's the normal of the area? Check out number one of this playlist. And then divided by the change in uh, time. So it's one. The change in magnetic field here is going to be two multiplied by the area. So they told us that's diameter, but you know that this thing is a circle. So what's the area of a circle? It's pi r squared. So we're going to take pi and multiply it by then half of this diameter, right? So it'd be 2.20 over 2. But then we need it in meters, so times 10 to the minus 2, all right, squared. I'm doing all the conversions in there all at once. Then multiplied by the cosine of the angle, right, between the normal, which is the perpendicular. And, you know, it doesn't matter if it's 180 or 0. All right, it's going to come out to a maximum. It might change the angle. So actually, let's see. Fingers pointing in the direction of the field. Yeah. So I, eh, it really doesn't matter. Let's just call it, let's just call it zero. So it's one. All right. So the cosine then, cosine of uh, zero, and then all divided now by uh, the change in time. Right. So what is the change in time here? It's going to be 0.25 seconds. All right, now take out the calculator, plug it in. So two times pi times the radius now, right? 2.2 over two, which is just 1.1 times 10 to the negative two squared, the cosine is one, then divided by 0.25. So what do we get? We get now a negative So negative, uh, I guess, 3.04 times 10 to the, one, two, three, negative three volts, okay? Or about three millivolts. Negative sign just kind of implies a directionality. They're, you know, it, uh, it, the magnitude, what they're asking here is, uh, what are they asking actually? Um, find the average EMF induced. Yeah, they're basically asking for like the magnitude more or less. So don't worry about the sign, it just gives us a certain direction. But uh, magnitude is what is important. And then, so that takes care of letter A. And then letter B, uh, it says, uh, discuss whether this current would significantly change the temperature of the ring. Um, this is like piddlins, you know. Think about, think about, think about like a battery or, you know, something like that. A 9-volt battery, right? Even if you get a little, little tiny shock there to a 9-volt, and this is going to be 3 millivolts. I mean, this is piddlins. So the answer is just no. All right, without going through too many calculations, I don't think we need to. 
All right. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please help us out and subscribe and check out some more of our videos. All right. We'll see you soon. Take care.